A few years ago, the world was shaken by some unexpected news. News about Atlantis. Suddenly, it turned out that the mysterious ancient state had been located in the Sahara. But isn't Atlantis supposed to have sunk in the water, not in the sand? It turns out that not everything is so simple. To find out where the truth is in this story, I conducted my own investigation. Before moving on to Atlantis, let's first deal with the Sahara. The desert is located on the African continent. It's considered the largest hot desert in the world, and the third largest of them all after the deserts of the Arctic and Antarctica. The area of the Sahara is 9,200,000 square kilometers, or 3,550,000 square miles. Of course, there are enough sites on such a huge territory. But the most amazing and unique place is the Eye of the Sahara. The Eye of the Sahara, also known as the Richat structure, is located in west-central Mauritania. And it does look like an eye. It's kind of a collapsed dome with a diameter of about 40 kilometers or 25 miles. The structure is so huge that it can even be seen from space. For a long time, Richat served as a reference point for cosmonauts in orbit, and it's quite convenient. A clearly visible object in the middle of a vast desert. But where did the eye come from? Initially, the eye of the Sahara was considered an ancient meteorite crater. Big round. It all made sense. But the bottom of the eye is too flat, and there are no impact traces on the rocks. It might have been a bomb explosion if it wasn't for the age of the structure. It's millions of years old. And what about a volcano? Another miss. There's no dome of volcanic rocks. As a result, None of the scientists are completely sure where the eye of the Sahara came from. The main theory is erosion. Some time ago, a section of the Earth's crust became exposed, and then the wind did the rest. So, what does Atlantis have to do with it? To understand this, you have to go back in time a bit, to the time of Plato. He died in the 4th century BC. Plato is considered a significant figure in philosophy. However, I'm not interested in his treatises, but rather information about the lost Atlantis. Information about Atlantis is contained in Plato's two dialogues, Timaeus and Critias. If you summarize this information, you get the following. In the 5th and 6th centuries BC, Atlantis was the main rival of Athens. The state was located on an island and was very powerful. Atlantis owned North Africa to Egypt and Europe to the west of Italy. But the island on which Atlantis stood is particularly interesting. According to Plato, there was a hill in the center of the island. It's located nine kilometers or five and a half miles from the sea. For protection, the hill was surrounded by three water and two land rings. The very center of Atlantis had a diameter of just under a kilometer or just under 0.6 miles. There were temples, a magnificent royal palace, and so on. All this splendor was located behind the Pillars of Hercules, which in antiquity is called the Strait of Gibraltar. That is, Plato placed Atlantis beyond the Strait of Gibraltar, most likely near the coast of Spain and present-day Morocco. Now, let's put all the information together. A large circular object surrounded by several earthworks and located across the Strait of Gibraltar. Yes, this is the Richat structure. It's not in the Atlantic Ocean, but still beyond the Pillars of Hercules, just a little further south than we used to think. Given how many years have passed, this could be attributed to geographical error. So, are the remains of Atlantis really hidden in the Sahara? As with other episodes of the story, it's full of riddles. Some scientists believe Atlantis is just a myth, a fairy tale invented by Plato, and this is understandable. 
but I want to address the facts. Plato indicates the approximate time of the flooding of Atlantis 9,000 years ago. This means that it happened around 9,500 BC. Let's make allowances for the fact that the philosopher was not very good at dates. Let's consider this year as an example. Were there large-scale floods at that time? Yes. However, none of them occurred near the eye of the Sahara. It's quite well protected from water. In any case, there's no evidence yet that this particular region flooded. All right. Let's leave aside the Richat structure for now. One of the most common theories about Atlantis is that Plato loved zeros. So he added an extra zero to the date of Atlantis' existence. In fact, the archetype of the ancient Atlanteans were the inhabitants of the island of Crete. The Minoan civilization was very developed. Its representatives lived on islands and built luxurious palaces. But more than 900 years before Plato was born, a volcano erupted on one of the islands. In about a day, it led to destruction on the island and the formation of a huge tsunami. The wave hit the northern coast of Crete and other islands in this part of the Mediterranean Sea. Volcanic ash covered the fields and famine began. Of course, Crete didn't go underwater, but it experienced a strong decline. And all of this is very reminiscent of the history of Atlantis. But there is one but. Crete is located on the opposite side of Gibraltar. Plato, of course, could have mixed up the dates, but not east and west. Now, let's go back to the eye of the Sahara. Let's assume that Atlantis really existed in this place, and it wasn't a flood that destroyed it, but, for example, an earthquake, or it was conquered, or it slowly deteriorated due to natural causes. In any case, where people once lived, there should now be traces of them. And in the Richat structure, there are. It's here that archaeologists have found clusters of Acheluian artifacts. Most of them are located near the outer ring of the eye. The Acheluian culture belongs to the early Paleolithic period. It began spreading approximately 1,760,000 years ago. That is, long before the possible appearance and death of Atlantis. The population of this culture was at the early stage of the primitive communal system. In other words, people used fire, were engaged in hunting and gathering, and made simple stone tools. In general, they shared few similarities with the mythical Atlanteans. Still, there are oddities. No artifacts have ever been found in the Richat structure itself. There are a lot of them around it, but not inside the eye. What was in this place? Why did our ancestors avoid it? And lastly, here's an interesting fact for you. It's believed that the desert in its current form has existed for quite some time, but there was once a sea there. On the territory of the Sahara, where today there are mostly only sand and stones, there was once a huge reservoir. Its depth was 50 meters, or 164 feet, and its area was 3,000 square kilometers, or 1,158 square miles. Not much for a sea, but in the middle of a desert, it certainly is. And it wasn't just a reservoir. Many ancient snakes and fish lived in the waters of the Trans-Saharan Seaway, and they were huge. This is evidenced by the remains found by paleontologists in the middle of the desert. Of course, this doesn't prove that Atlanteans swam in the Sahara with the giant ancestors of crocodiles. But it seems that this region is hiding many more secrets than previously thought. Scientists continue to explore the desert and the Richat structure, and who knows what it will lead to one day. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click on the bell to receive timely notifications about the release of new, interesting videos that are waiting for you ahead.